Top of the evening to you folks. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We're glad to be here and we're glad to have you. As always, if you've been enjoying our stuff, please give us a quick like and maybe subscribe. Uh, it's the easiest process in the world. All you need is a Gmail account to do it. And it goes a long way in it. And we really appreciate it. So with that, drums, let's have a good episode tonight, buddy. Five, four, three, two, one. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the yes. kingdom. As always, my name is Drums, and I am joined by the brothers behind King Golf, Regan and Jordan Headley. Teeing it up first, as we usually do, we're heading up north, seeing what's going on with our buddy Reg. What's happening, bud? Well, I'm, uh, as mentioned in the uh, pre-show, I'm in a I'm pretty rough shape right now. I finally started to try to take care of my body this week and overall in life. All kinds of uh, vitamins, everything else, lots of sleep, and my body's failing on me today. I think I might have got the uh, old one nine up here in, in Dauphin, COVID. That is, um, I'm feeling pretty pretty shitty right now. Uh, I'm just in I'm in rough shape up here, so it's, that's what you get. Yeah, exactly. I'm just gonna go back to being a piece of shit. Yeah, be scumbag. It's just not worth it. <laughs> Jordan, what's going on on your side, bud? Top of the evening to you, boys. A uh, couple things to note, I would say. First, sorry to anybody who's watching um, for the bright shirt here. Hopefully, you got your sunglasses on. And uh, drums, I see you got a super stroke there in the background. You've been practicing putting a little bit or what? Just stroking. Just stroking it. Nice. <laughs> uh, I had a delicious meal tonight. Spence Bros, mm -hmm. uh, unofficial sponsor of the show. <laughs> And uh, I'm working on some some chiladas here, so that's about it. We've had some good days here lately, that's for sure. Yeah. A couple uh, couple days to melt the snow on the driveway. Uh, after I almost gave up on it, drums. We had that that conversation on the weekend, but I shoveled it, and uh, it mostly melted away. So beauty, we're good. There you go. And uh, and drums, you all good? All good in the hood. We had uh, we had ourselves a nice little tour around winnipeg for a quick saturday nice little saturday we got on the winnipeg did a tour uh hit up golf town got a new wedge that's about what uh, uh chili made nice 60, high toe 60 oh, this bitch. Oh, he's been is that a high toe room. low toe uh, it just says Taylor made Z spin or Z spin, depending on where you live. Nice. You think we all, dialed in? We're all in Manitoba. Yeah. Auto auto dial. Nice. Would you love to hear that? Actually, I didn't have a sixty for like two years. So got I it back. Had one. Oh, I used to have an I used to have a sixty four degree wedge. Actually, an alien. The alien. <laughs> Public service Man. announcement. Ooh. Talk yeah, about the actually, worst wedge on earth. You I have, have it? it here. Yeah. Well, we both had one, and I have mine here. It's in the uh, bag and under the stairs. I might pull it out one of these days. I don't know what it is for a degree. 64. Is it 64 or more? It's basically a spatula. And it weighs I might, fucking 20 pounds. I might gas my three wood <laughs> and just pull out the alien. <laughs> it's like it, for those really in tight spots. Like, there's no way you could, like, if it's a tight lie, that thing is just clunking it. Like the the size of the back on that thing is unbelievable. Why is that? Why hey. was it a, a thing? No, but that's a good idea. Like that could be a good tip for somebody if they like have a club in their bag that they like always have in there, but every time they hit it, it sucks. Take that club out, replace it with the alien, and you know you're not you're not hitting any more bad shots with that club. And you, there might be a time where the alien comes in into play. And if, if not, like, it's a good conversation piece. Like, oh, is that <laughs> an alien? <laughs> yeah, that's an alien. Of course it is. 64 degree, baby. Vintage. Yeah. <laughs> Great conversation starter. <laughs> Actually, I think hey, I have one somewhere, too. We should do you know up. if, like, there's a rule with the 14 clubs, can you have two putters? Probably. I think so. I don't think so. I don't so. think there's a – I don't think I'll you can. two drivers for a while. What's the difference? Yeah, I don't think you can have two putters, but I don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the thing. 
put a Jager in there instead. Get it from Dally. <laughs> yeah. Or a uh, – I was trying to think of what those were called. Is it uh, – what's the other one called? Jigger? It's like a ham. Care- no. Careful now. <laughs> careful now. <laughs> Do you remember what it was called, Jor? Gibble? Giblet? Gimlet. Giblet sounds right for sure. Anyways, like I would Anyways. say uh, bring it back for next episode. Tonight, yeah. what do we have on? We got a good show. I'd say probably the best show of all time. The biggest show of our lives, easily. Um, we're going to do some housekeeping. We're going to watch drums chug some wine. We're going to pick new ones for the waste management tonight. We're going to talk about arguably the wildest story in golf that I've ever heard outside of the Mo Norman stuff. Um, and then we're going to get into our segment. So I would say the podcast is kind of back in full swing. I guess we've made some tweaks. We've made some adjustments to it, but we're kind of just back in the, our old, our old, uh, what would you call it? Groove. Groove routine. And, uh, we got some good guests coming up still. We got to finish reading DI's book and then we're going to have him on the podcast, but we're all pretty slow readers, so it's been taking a while. It's really not a long book. <laughs> no, I, but... I can't. I can't read, and Easton's been pretty busy, so she hasn't been able to read to me. So I, I'm just trying to find time when we're both together and uh, don't have anything else to do for her to get that for me. But yeah, we'll have to talk uh, to him about getting an audio tough. version. <laughs> I definitely book. need an audio version. <laughs> Maybe instead of uh, interviewing on the podcast, you can just go on and read the book. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, no. Rico, what do we got for housekeeping? Lots, actually. Uh, Cox was back at it uh, last weekend. Uh, I should say last tournament. Uh, had a tough round on the on the uh, Friday, or on the Thursday. Bounced back on the Friday, but it just was a couple strokes short of uh, making the cut. Shot three under on the second day, though, which was impressive. So hopefully he's got his game back in shape. Uh, he's playing in Africa right now. Did you guys see his Instagram today? Insane. Pretty yeah. wild. Like, insane course. Uh, he's playing on the challenge tour this week, so be tracking that. Um, oh, quickly, he shared one of our posts today too. We have, uh, I mean, we we had the head cover set for him made. He designed it. He uh, put everything together. We just, I guess he didn't put it together. We put it together. He drew it up. We put it together, and uh, he's got it on the bag. So we have all three head covers on the website kinggolf.ca. And we also put a, a set together, our first ever set of head covers. So um, regular price is about 330 bucks per uh, if you're to do each one individually, but we got them for 250 bucks on there. So um, pretty good deal. That's yeah, nice I would say to it's have the good. same uh, same set as Aaron Cockrell. And of course you can make any adjustments to it that you want. Uh, as long as the design's the same, you can change the colors and change the, driver to a fairway wood and stuff like that but that's uh where we're at so it's up for it's up for debate but that might be the nicest set we've ever made honestly. that's my favorite that's phenomenal looks so good like they are sharp man holy i don't know we've, i agree yeah there was a there was a set we did last year i think for brady uh skinner for her dad remember yep. skin dog it was kind skin of like dog, the same yeah. color scheme it was just black and white yeah. and it was sick yeah yeah black and white sharp man anyway sorry oh. to go no, that's okay. Uh, I guess we could talk about Pebble, the AT and T. Are you guys? I don't know. What do you guys think about that tournament? I don't know, Matt. Like I don't. <laughs> Feb, January, February seemed like just a kind of write off in the golf world for watching it. I don't know why. Like I don't, there's yeah. nothing really else to except I do like the Hawaii swing because. Everything's on at six o'clock at night, right? Yeah, prime time. But other than days. that, like, there's nothing that I have to watch tournament wise. Um, just catch kind of portions of it when you can until basically the Masters, then it kicks in again. Seamus, Seamus almost pulled her off on the weekend there. Seamus, he was, uh, he was dialed, hey, and then all of a sudden just kind of fell off. I mean, it is tough to get that, that first win, obviously. Um, but, he's kind of been in the same position a couple times in the past mm-hmm. little bit here, eh? He's sick. He was, like, he's really good. Yeah, Seamus is good. Uh, Patty talks. Is he the, is he the new? Uh, yeah, is he the new Rory? Oh boy, I think Rory's still around. Where is he? Did you see what he did? Did you guys see that? Uh, 
in the in one of those Saudi tournaments there. Brewers. Yeah. He was tied for the lead, and he went for the green on a par five on eighteen, and and put in the water and lost. Oh, really? <laughs> Who won over laid up and, I haven't, I haven't uh, actually paid attention. That was to the one. Either. That was the one Vic won. Rory was right there. Mm. He kind of fell on Vic's lap. I, hey, I didn't see this? this past weekend, but what's the story with Pebble Beach, Rigo? Because you were talking about we were texting about the other day, and I I tried to find how it was the it was the why why do they have such a shitty tournament at the Pebble Beach? Like why isn't there a, a big tournament there ever? I guess the U.S. Open's been there a couple times, right? Yeah, yeah, like three or four times I think. But the thing that I don't like about that tournament probably is that. Like if you're gonna have a tournament at Pebble, have the tournament at Pebble. Like they, they play one round at Spyglass yeah. and then one at the uh, Monterey Peninsula, and then one one at the, at Pebble, and then they play the final round at Pebble. But I don't know. It's just they, I also read because I was trying to figure out why they don't have a more prestige tournament there. I guess like this AT and T Pro Am is kind of a laugher, isn't it? I, I yeah, it is. Like, it like why? I don't know. Like Bill Murray's there hacking around, and like all these guys are there, and it just seems like a shit show. But um, it, Macklemore was there. Do you guys see it said that? It, is, it's the shortest course on tour. Like, or it was is the it? shortest course of the year. Yeah. Like it was only 66, 66, 50. I think it played this last weekend. So, and they must not be able to bump it back at all. Eh? just based on the real estate there. Or what? Yeah, I guess not. So I, I just, I don't know. I think it's, it's more of a interesting course to watch than it actually is to play. I, I don't know. I was trying to find why they couldn't have a better tournament there, but it also could be sponsor rights. Like these guys, it seems like it's been the AT and T pro am for a long time. So yeah, true. That's probably it actually. So I don't know. And it's... and and probably at that time when they signed that deal for the pro am, there was a probably like a lot more interest in celebrities and shit. Right. I watched a really cool video of uh, Tiger and and uh, Costner playing together oh, really? in, uh, in 97 it was on the pga posted on youtube the other day it's like a five minute video man costner's unreal uh, guy he's a pretty good golfer too that must have been around the time of tin cup but uh watching tiger in 97 holy cow just like they'll they'll never be another guy like that ever no. just the whole thing i mean he was the golf his look that he had and just how he acted on course and his Worth the five minutes for sure. Pretty incredible, yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's 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 crazy to look at those videos, and you can see why his body's so damaged now. Like, I mean, the guy just ripped at it for twenty years. Like, I don't know. Yeah. We kind of talk. I, I don't know why this pops in my head, but we were talking the other day about Shaq Ajor, and like yeah. the stress and and everything he put that big fucking body through. It's incredible mm -hmm. that he's in as good a shape as he is. And then we uh, just thinking of Tiger for how long he put his body through shit and now he's starting to break down right so like yeah, Shaq the big man is for a while <laughs> Shaq because Shaq's of beauty awesome. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah so Tom Hogue won that AT&T Tom Hogue Tom Schmoke I don't know in my opinion <laughs> no it's good for him um, I thought it was Hogue I didn't, I didn't Hoagie. watch this I didn't watch the uh, finish I was busy on Sunday but Apparently, Spieth caught a bad break on 18 or something. Did you did, watch the drums? No, but did you see that shot he hit over uh, hanging off the cliff? Yeah, that was wild. Oh, my God. No thanks. I don't, no thanks ever. Yeah, actually. not a chance. I don't think that. he was that close. He was pretty fucking – he was like a foot away. Mm-hmm. Like, if he's a lefty, he's not going to – he can't hit that shot. <laughs> so, he, I mean – Could yeah, you imagine, though? I saw this. Yeah. It's, it's funny you say that, Drums. Did you see that shot? It said, uh, somebody tweeted, I don't know which account it was, but it said, uh, everybody's making such a big deal of speed hitting the shot from just off the cliff. Meanwhile, there's guys out there working for 16 bucks an hour, doing that all day, every day. <laughs> well, yeah, they cut that. They cut that like, shit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. Know. That'll be the rookie guy's job. Uh. Rips on the West Coast tour in Canada right now. His first game is in uh, Vancouver tonight. Then he's in Edmonton Friday and Calgary Saturday. It's too bad we didn't uh, put our heads together a bit. We, we probably could have went out there for the two Alberta games, really. But still might. Too soon to say. Yeah, Jordan Moose might head out. Pretty, pretty wide open out there. And then I guess 
last but not least for my housekeeping is just uh, the field in uh, the waste management. It's absolutely incredible. I think there's like Act. pretty good, well, like 12 of the top 15 golfers in the world or something are there. Like, I don't think they've ever had anything like that before. Just missing um, uh, the big cat. Yeah. Man, do you, okay. Sometimes when I, when I come up with thoughts, I forget that we're recording and live and stuff, but um, <laughs> do you, uh, do you remember when we went to the waste management tiger played Thursday, Friday, and we showed up Saturday and he would miss the cut. Yeah. And that was like the first time that he had been back there for a while, I think, because somebody threw a banana at him, correct? Uh, something like that. I don't know if it was a banana for sure, but it was something on 16, something happened bad. Oh, and he never um, went back for like 10 years, I think. Sparrow was there the Friday and he sends me Snapchats every year. Like how close he was to Tiger rubbing it in that he was there because he knew that we missed him because he missed the cut. <laughs> so he just keeps sending me the same Snapchat. Look how close I was to Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the closest, that's the closest I've ever been was uh, a day late. Well, we found out he was playing and we booked the tickets then to go down there and watch him and we just assumed he would make the weekend and he missed the cut. He was dog shit at that time. Oh, yeah. That was when he was like struck. Like, I think he missed a lot of cuts in a row at that point, at that time frame. Was yeah. that, uh, I don't think he should have been golfing. I think he was injured. Yeah. Was that pre? I think it was pre crash. No, post. Post. Pre. pre oh, first, like second pre, crash or first, like first uh, crash? Yeah, it was after that. But he, uh, I think this was right before he got his. His Do back we? fused. No, his back fused. I don't know. We need a tiger timeline here of that's true. What a career that guy's had with all the tournaments and all this different accidents and surgeries and marriages. Good God. Okay, did you guys see that Papinol that got into the waste management? Canadian? Hmm. He got in Monday Q. He Monday Q'd. So he shot, he's playing college golf now. So I, I looked up his stuff and uh, he hurt his knee. Uh, in 2020 so he didn't golf for a full year like he was sick at that time he didn't golf for a full year uh he had surgery didn't golf and then he kind of got back into it slowly uh got accepted onto a i think it's vermont that he's playing college golf with so he's been playing college golf he shot a 59 the other day i actually retweeted it when that happened he he posted he joined the 59 club and then he shot a tournament play no but practicing and then he shot a 62 in the pre queue of the Monday queue. So he shot a 62 to get into the Monday queue. And then he shot five under and buried the second hole. And I think it was a seven for two, seven playoff? for two playoff, I believe. I so, made it. And he's in now. So he's in playing on the PGA this weekend. So he's um, and that Silverman's in too, another Canadian. So this is uh, the Silverman. second time, hey, Silverman. This is the second time in uh, three weeks that the that there's been two Canadians at a Monday queued, both times. There was a shit sick. ton in the tournament. Was there nine last week? Uh, two, uh, weeks two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. I'm Farmers. pretty That's sure like, like seven of them made the cut, didn't they? Like, or maybe that was last weekend. I don't know. I was looking at the leaderboard and yeah, it was I can't like remember now. all the Canadian flags were pretty high up there. I think like four yeah. of them were in the top 20 or something last week. Yeah. Three or four of them. Anyways, mm -hmm. wild. Yeah, it's sick. Hughes had a good week last week. Connor yeah, Hughes. Too. Yeah. I seen so it's that, good to see. Um, Charles Howell, the third, is making his 600th PGA start this week. Chucky, Chucky three sticks. <laughs> That's what yep. Tiger Tracker used to call him. Guess how much, guess how much he's earned his, in his career. Oh, a lot, probably. Guess uh, twenty million. Isn't it like thirty-seven or something? It's forty-one. That's fucking crazy. 41. Oh, and, and he doesn't have that many wins, right? No, like only like two or three. He might have three. Probably should have looked that up, but then... that's a crazy stat, man. Like yeah. no majors, eh? No. Chucky. That crazy. That's a pretty hey, damn good career, man. I was listening to um, No Laying Up. They actually had the uh, the producers. I think they were the producers of the Netflix show. 
oh, on. Yeah. So they were kind of like touching on a bunch of stuff on there. Uh, but then they started talking about Phil. Or no, maybe this was a different one. Anyways, there was no lining up. But they were talking about Phil because uh, of that shit he was saying about the PGA, just calling them greedy and whatnot. So th- they, I think his career earnings uh, was around 100. It might have been about 80. But his like net worth is like half a bill closer to like 700 billion or uh, 700 million. So how much Phil's worth. And he's bitching about the PGA being greedy. <laughs> oh. I saw this thing uh, that said they did you see that breakdown of like the top four sports leagues like MLB, NBA, NFL, and NHL and their like profit sharing? Mm-hmm. The PGA is actually up to 55%. And those guys are all like at 51, 48. Like the PJ is the highest of those. Yeah. They've just bumped it up in the last couple of years. But yeah, I don't know. There's some crazy shit going on right now with that stuff, man. Like the there's amount of money those it's kind of cool, actually. The amount of money those guys have. And but then there's also they talk about the corruption that happens in in Dubai and like all the stuff that happens over there and like all like the stuff against human rights. And then well, it's not like and you just Right, but in that... It's backed by China, so yeah. But in the country... No, but this is all backed by the Saudis, right? And they're saying all the stuff that happens over there. Like, that's what that Rappaport was saying in his story. Just, like, people forget about that. And these guys are just buying up, like, all the leagues in the world. Like, they just bought, like, a a huge uh, uh, soccer team. And they signed the, the rights for the F1 for, like... I forget what it was, like a hundred million dollars or something for that. And they're just like spending money like crazy everywhere. And like, they're arguing that they're just doing that. But then there's people from there arguing that it's about time that the people there get to watch live sporting, like everybody else has enjoyed for the last 50 years. I don't know. It, it's a, it's a crazy argument going on right now. And like they're throwing wild money at the PGA players. Well, it's like they're, def- they're definitely washing money. Right. Will it end in a war? World War. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> CNN. Don't give any hints to CNN. They'll be talking about World War Four. <laughs> yeah, they're skipping three and just going to four. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, three's, so, already, three's already in the mist with uh, yeah, Ru- hey, China and Ru- or Russia and Ukraine. Apparently, according to CNN, Jesus, Putin, Putin's out walking his dog. <laughs> Well, we were talking, talking about. To uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Do you want to get into that? <laughs> I don't really. I'd um, love to. We we're talking about Chucky Three Sticks. How did uh, Chuckles Hoffman make out on the weekend there? <laughs> not uh, okay, not whoa, so whoa, good. Hold on, hold that's on. So that's housekeeping. Got, drums, you got housekeeping. No, that's after housekeeping. Uh, little, okay. Uh, Formula One. Did you guys see? Uh, Mercedes had an auction where they were auctioning off tours of their factory. And the winner of oh. the auction was uh, the Red Bull manager. <laughs> no way. Yeah. No way. So now he's like got a behind the scenes tour of uh, what? <laughs> of the plant and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like the principal guy? Yeah. Wow. What's his name? The guy that's married to the Spice, his name the right spice Girl. God. It's like DeGarde or something like that. No, Horner. Son of a bitch hey isn't it horner or something horner christian horner christian yeah, yeah. <laughs> he won it <laughs> it's unreal yeah do you think they'll, they'll let him in like they have to i, don't, it, I right? don't know did you guys I, see a red bull card today they released oh deadly <laughs> i love red Bull. jesus yeah, yeah me too. i might start drinking red bulls again just to support the team <laughs> i drink them like every day how much what? money does red bull have you have red bull every day i probably have like two a week i would say oh <sighs> How's your heart? That's probably why your fucking back is exploding. From Red Bull. Well, you mix a couple of waters with some Red Bull. You don't know what happens. You're not a chemist. He's right. <laughs> He's right. Oh, for real though. How much money does Red Bull have? Well, they charge four bucks for one of those little cans. Little dinky ass cans. And Good God. What a story that Red what- Bull is. But Red Bull has so much cool stuff, man. We need to do a deep dive into Red Bull, I think. Like, for real. Check out their like, earnings. Check out everything that they own. 
Well, how about they sponsor that guy jumping off the edge of the world? They yeah. sponsor everything like that. They're unreal, actually. They actually are. They're underrated. Red Bull underrated. The drink itself, mm-hmm. overrated. Red no, Bull as a company, not even close. Yeah. Red Bull, yes. no. You like Sucks. it? Oh God, sugar free Red Bull is good with no. vodka. No, no, no. Like, remember those things? Biz had those Eagle Energies, those little vape pens. Drums, wake up! They taste like Red Bulls. So I just um, bought those, just so I didn't have to drink them. Okay, I got one thing to add here for housekeeping. Two things. One, I was walking the other day because it was really nice out, and I saw a snow fort. It was the first snow fort I've seen in years. Uh-huh. And it was actually a really good snow fort. It had four holes, like tunnels and stuff in and out of it. It wasn't just like one hole. But, man, we remember how many forts we used to make as kids? Like, there was no winters without forts. Every day. Every day there'd be a fort. New fort popped up around town. Yeah. But also, I don't know that we've had enough snow the last five or six years either. I was just going to say that. That's very true. Now we got way too much. Too much. Way too much. Way too much. Uh, And part two of my housekeeping is I started uh, Yellowstone season four. I'm about halfway through it now. And uh, if you're into watching horses spin around over and over again, you're going to love season four. Dally was telling you it sucked there's i mean i don't know i said that on here too season four sucks. not ideal it's just yeah. like a whole bunch of horses spinning around so if you're into the horse spinning around you're it's your it's your kind of season or if or, or if you're into like if you're going to be into watching a a show after the sixes ranch then this is a good lead up for that but other than that the, the season sucks shit <laughs> that sixes ranch is pretty deadly though i must say yeah but and it, it's cool to watch those horses do the slide and the spin and stuff, but yeah, one episode. I mean, I don't need to see it 20, 20 minutes per episode over and over yeah. again. No, so that's uh, it. Okay, so yeah, I got one do you more. Anything else, Rio, or what? I okay, got one more. more. Okay, so I discovered this one. Uh, care of our buddy Joey Pomps, Joe Pompliano. Uh, but let's see if you guys can figure this one out. Oh, no, right. trivia. nice. There's one sports figure that is wealthier than James Harden, Conor McGregor, and Steph Curry combined. This person is no, neither a player an, or an owner. And is he currently on the payroll? He is, he is currently active. Is he an agent? Nope. He's not a player or a what? Or like an owner of a team or a manager or... So he's got to be a coach. Nope. Dancing Gabe. No. <laughs> Gritty. So it's Michael Buffer. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that with a million guesses. Do you know, who that, know who that is? Let's get ready to rumble. No. no. He's worth over four. Really? Oh, career earnings. Dude didn't start that till he was 38. Wow. <laughs> he was watching uh came like came up with how old is like, he now? Uh he's probably like 65, I don't know. And I'd say in that range. Uh, but him and his son were watching boxing one day, and the announcer like kept screwing up names and everything, and he was like, This guy sucks, like he should have a little more enthusiasm. <laughs> and uh he was kind of like a half-ass actor at the time, so he just started like sending his headshots to HBO and all the places and like recorded himself doing that intro and that's what got him on and just stuck with him he wow. can get he gets paid upwards to a million dollars per event wow wow for what that's all he does is he just, just goes for saying does, that he does the intros like um from and in this corner yeah and then he does that and uh gets paid a schmill for it and fucks off he said that the Vegas game didn't he in playoffs. No, that was Remember his brother. That? that was his brother. Oh, really? That was his brother Bruce. He does the UFC. Bruce Buffer. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's who I was thinking of. Um, Woof. Did you ever see that? This is from my. That's insane. How much right? money? But I mean, there's so much money out there in like the sports world that it's got to go somewhere, and it goes to crazy places like that. that that's wild. I would have never ever thought he was worth that much money. Like I would have said, like ten twenty. Still, like, rich as hell. Do you think 
this just has me thinking though. He's you know an what? icon though. He's an icon. Yeah, he is. You can't put James Harden in the same like category as him, I don't think. Well, but like Connor Mack for sure. But like those guys are also making money at the richest time ever, and he still has more money than. Them. Yeah, that's wild. So he's made more than Connor McGregor. Connor's worth like a, a hundred. But that a lot Price of that would be though. like sponsors and shit, eh? Right, and his whiskey and blah blah blah. Like he hasn't made a hundred oh, million. That whiskey's good. Off of fighting. True. Did you ever guys ever see that video of the EA Sports guy saying it? Hmm. Yeah. Just looks like a just looks like a random dad. Yeah. And then all of a sudden this voice just comes out and <laughs> says it. But so I wonder how much he's worth. I don't know. Okay, anyways, let's move on. No, just wait. Do you think though at the like say the Vegas games, you know how they have the guy that uh does the horn. like the celebrity that comes in whatever you'd call that horn? Prince's horn. Yeah, well, whatever it is. Do you think those guys do it out of like a prestige thing, or do you think they get an appearance fee to do that? Appearance fee. Think so? Yeah. Huh. Unless, Vegas, man. Unless they're like a super fan, but like, yeah, pe- like celebrities don't do shit without a bag. That'd be absolutely electrical to do that in this year. The stadium going nuts. I don't know. Get that that place cranked. is crazy. <laughs> Get that horn cranked and make the crowd go wild. <laughs> we good here, boys? Yeah. We got to keep things moving along. That was the longest episode of housekeeping ever, but that's okay. We don't have a whole lot on the agenda tonight. So, well, we do because we got, I'd say we got a lot still. But, uh, anyways, la- our last episode was an hour and a half. So, yeah, we don't pluck it. No, we don't. Um, Drumsy, yo, you picked Chuckles Hoffman. He sure looked like he withdrew after 18 holes at the, uh, AT&T Pro Am. Yeah, he got COVID. So, uh, Do I not get a um, medical exemption? <laughs> Did he get COVID? I don't think so. I think he sucks shit. So he's like, I'm out of here. So uh, Mark Baldwin and Seamus Power both actually had a really good weekend. That was Rigo and my picks. Um, so drums, as a loser, you have to chug wine. So pour a glass. I'm not pouring. I'll keep talking glass. here. Like this half well, you glass. have to. It's like half a glass. Top it. Me. Top it. Half a glass of wine's good. Okay. It's equivalent to like three shotguns. You have to chug. Yeah. Because I mean. when we lose, we'll have to we'll have to shotgun. One beer. What's what's half a cup of wine? Just do it. Way way more. No. Just do it. So let's get ready to rumble. From now on, though. <laughs> oh, he's milking it. <laughs> He's drinking air. <laughs> no, you How was that? It. You can see uh-huh. the pain in his face at the end. What are you drinking tonight, drums? What kind of wine? Black key. Black cellar. Black cellar. And how's the chug? You're awful. <laughs> okay. So last week we came up with our new Pick'ems challenge for 2022. Uh, the loser, as you just witnessed, has to uh, shotgun a beer, chug a beer, chug wine, and drums his case. And uh, but we have something to add to it as well. We're gonna do our draws again. We're gonna do it a little bit differently. Haven't worked out the details yet. It's freestyling. But we're gonna have a winner and a loser. Winner gets uh, a payment of T fuel. We're going to keep pumping T-Fuel on here for sure. Uh, we want to get, we want to spread it around. And uh, so the winner gets T-Fuel, the loser shotguns a beer. But if the guest, <laughs> if the guest, um, what was I saying? If the guest loses, they have to take a video and send it to us to play on the show. So it's a gamble because there's no charge to enter, but you could face repercussions of shotgunning a beer. What do you guys think of that? Must Interested? must be must be eighteen and over. Must be eighteen proof and I, over to qualify. Proof ID must be shown at the time of chug. <laughs> <laughs> drums, uh, drums might have a tough second half of the show here by the looks of things. <laughs> oh, we're going all in. Okay, so drums as the reigning loser, 
<laughs> you pick first for the uh, waste management this weekend. Um, this is probably another stupid pick, but I'm going Harold Higgs. Harry Higgs. Harry Higgs. Okay. He looks like a Did Harold. Did he have a good too, finish eh? last week? Or no? I don't know. I can't remember. I didn't see old Higgs bowls last week. I don't even know if he played, to be honest. I saw that uh, Damon had a good weekend, or Damon. Oh. Yeah, piss on him. Hey, who are you taking? Luis, you go? go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go with Corey Connors. Mm-hmm. Canadians are hot, and uh, they got lots of support right now from the Canadians. I'm going to go uh, Hayden Buckley. Hit. Webb Simpson just went through today, and uh, Hayden Buckley got in as a uh, as the first alternate. 300, 358 days ago, Hayden Buckley got it as the first alternate at the Corn Ferry Tour and won the event in Florida. So Monday Q has a good feeling. He's tweeted about six times that he's going to win the tournament. So will, will you guys give me two? Hell no. no. Okay. What do we want to do for to get a guest on here? Should we do it like last year? We did a code word for listeners only. Do we open it up to Instagram too? Or what do we figure? Instagram wouldn't be a bad idea, but anyways, this is less of a planning session. I would say for next weekend, let's do a word. What is it, Rigo? Mm. Or drums. Antarctica. Ooh, nice one. Got to spell it right, too. So if you want to be in next week's Pickums, uh, send us a message to Instagram, Twitter, email, MySpace, anything, or comment on the YouTube video as well. And uh, we'll get you in the draw. We'll, we'll probably do the draw off air, right? And then we'll reach out to them and then we'll announce the picks on here, probably. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if you want in, it's a risk reward. You could win some T Fuel or you could end up shotgunning on the show. Hey. One we'll last thing no on entries. the uh, one last thing on the waste management, and that's it. Uh, just about uh, Summer Hayes, um, nineteen year old in the field, amateur like sponsorship exemption. Uh, Daniel Summer Hayes' nephew, his dad coaches Finau. He's been playing with these guys his whole life. He had an interview basically saying he feels comfortable here because he's been around these guys so much. Obviously, that shit's going to change when there's hundreds of thousands of fans out there, but. Um, be interesting to see how he finishes this weekend. He just started, uh, he just started college golf this year, so incredible, incredible story. Just, just wait to see it unfold, I guess. I wanted to get that in there just in case he wins and we can replay that. Just saw Hank walk by, yeah, I saw that big old Hank, Um, not supposed to be in that room. Okay, and also on last week's episode, we announced that we're going to be doing. A King Golf small town circuit. Six tournaments plus a grand finale. Uh, it'll be a two-man scramble league. So we actually had probably, I, th- I don't know, if, I don't know an exact number here. It's not that many, but five to seven teams uh, reach out, say they're interested. So if we get a few more teams, uh, actually, we'll probably go ahead with it, but the good news is we're going to go ahead with it probably. And uh, if you're listening to this, didn't catch last week's episode, it's going to be a two man scramble, six events plus finale, uh, formula one style, 10 teams total. Um, you can have up to six guys on your team and you send two to each event um, and you need a sponsor. And then there'll be payouts every week and then payouts uh, for the, the champions of the league. So, it's going to be a competitive league. The leagues that or the teams that have signed up are pretty, pretty good. Um, so, I mean, in other words, King Golf needs to pull up its socks quite a bit. And, well, who, uh, who, who else is on our team? Just us three? Uh, yeah. Oh, we're fucked. Well, yeah, we'll we get are. some guys. Don't worry. We'll get some guys. Some ringers? We'll get Dal. I said ringers. We'll get Dal. Jonah. We'll get, uh, Dad. We'll get Jonah. Randy, Tom, uh, Tom, Sear. 
Okay, moving on. So I guess just to close on that, if you uh, are just hearing this for the first time and want to put in a team, reach out to us. It's going to be, a, I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to get uh, lots of promotion on it. We're going to be putting it across our platforms and we're going to get a bunch of footage out there and just good competitive golf. No handicaps, just uh, may the best team win. So I think that's about it. Let's get to uh, kind of the main part of the show, I guess, tonight. Maybe. I don't know how long we're going to talk about it, but um, Rigo sent a, a really cool article uh, yesterday, and Drums also sent it about an hour later. So these guys are both in the weeds looking for golf stuff and stumbled across a pretty damn good article. Like I said, it's probably the coolest story in golf that I've seen for a long time. Uh, I really resonated with it for sure just with everything that's been going on lately and how the world is at the moment. But uh, drums, you awake there, bud? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, I thought the wine got you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, So I guess, Rigo, maybe you give us a quick, because uh, you were first on the scene. Maybe explain it to us, and uh, we'll get into a little bit deeper dive of it. And then if people want to do the full dive, they can read it. By the way... Yeah. This was a read. This was like longer than some of the books I've read in my life. Oh, yeah. I read it at coffee time at work, and I like, I had to screenshot where I was so I could finish it when I got home. Yeah, I honestly but, didn't read uh, the whole thing. It was so goddamn long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, first off, it's written by uh, Daniel Rappaport. Unreal. And, man, Daniel Rappaport has been on fire. Like, I, I would say he's the best, right? He's got to be, he's got to be like one of the top golf follows, not like reporters, not players, anything. He, like, he's in on follow. everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Like, even everything. his stories, like, he has something on, he has something on like everything that you hear, like maybe a myth or whatever it is. He's got an article written about it. You just have to go to his Twitter page and he's already got something on it. That's insane. So this one, though, this one that we're talking about, and, and people that are listening to this have probably seen it if they are following him. Um, on Morgan Hoffman. George, I don't know if you remember this uh, backstory of Morgan Hoffman, but it was actually at the Waste Management when you guys came down there to visit us and we went and watched the tournament. And uh, Morgan Hoffman was walking down the 15th fairway. I yelled and Charlie. We almost got kicked out of the Waste Management by the guy in the blue coat because we were yelling, where's Charlie, the entire time <laughs> he was walking down the that fairway. That was to him? That was to him. Wow. And he got security. He called the security or whatever they are over to us and basically said, hey, listen, either you go to 16 and act like this, like you can't act like this on the rest of the course. <laughs> we were on hole 15 just yelling like idiots. But anyways. That's enough. Feel, that's enough, that's that's enough of this segment now. then if that was him. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so anyways, uh, super cool article. Um Morgan Hoffman was one of the top amateurs. I think he was the top ranked amateur in the world. He used to play with uh, Thomas Fowler and those guys. Um, got diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, which another professional athlete, I guess, that he, he had been in touch with, got diagnosed with the same thing. He was in a wheelchair uh, a year later. So, I mean, that's basically what the doctors here were telling him. Uh, he decided to basically go on his own and uh, – I forget what the what the exact term of the uh, doctor he went to to see in in Costa Rica. I forget the name of it, but do you guys know offhand? It doesn't know. matter. It's like alternative yeah. therapy or alternative therapy. And and uh, this guy or this girl was known to be the best. He went out there, started it, and the rest will fill the rest of our story here. It is wild. Some of the stuff, man, is like you have to read it twice. Like really, that that's what that's what happened, but. What, what did you guys think? What's what's your overall feel on it? Obviously, you guys are, yeah, without going we're too much into We're crazy the, like Morgan? No, I would, no I'm not going to say crazy, but obviously you're on the same side as him, and I think most people are as well. I, I think that this uh, is an eye-opener with a lot of things, and I think that a lot of people have already found this kind of uh, natural pathway. Obviously, Liz is a natural path doctor, and I, I – I've actually, and that's kind of why ever since I read the article, I've kind of been trying to go back to what my natural path was telling me how to get rid of the heartburn, the issues I have and stuff like that. And actually 
following it, not just like I started it. You know what I mean? This, this was kind of an inspiration. And I, the whole thing is just so cool. Uh, just everything yeah. about it is, is amazing. Yeah. What, I don't know how much we really need to get to give away. Uh, he just kind of, it sounded like he was on top of the world almost for a while. And then I don't, I wouldn't say he had the greatest PGA uh, career just yeah. because of what was going on. I think with uh, he's losing swing speed, it almost seemed like he couldn't flex his bicep or something. Is that what the no, issue was? Like he, or pack. pack. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that makes sense. Um, and so when stuff like that happens, it seemed like, without hearing it from the horse's mouth, the guys were basically just like, not shitting on him, but there was a bunch of wild stuff going around. And I mean, that's how everything happens in life that he was. And a lot of times there is some, a bit of truth to it that just kind of gets twisted in, into, you know, some wild caveman shit. But um, one of the therapies that he, he tried was the grapes. So he, he ate uh, 18 days straight of grapes uh, he went to Whole Foods every morning and bought out the whole grapes section and just ate grapes. I think he ate 800 a day or something like that. Mm, something like that. Oh, yeah. something. And then he basically drank his own urine for, I think, a week straight and washed it in his gums and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not uh, what I would consider something that I would do. Um but, but you never but, know. I've never been, I've never been diagnosed with uh, anything crazy. I mean, I did have skin, skin cancer. I'm sure most listeners wouldn't um, know that I had a big chunk of my chest tucking out and I didn't try any therapies like that. I wish that I would have though, if that happened tomorrow, I sure shit would. Um, but it's different. Like that was surgery. Get it out. I, for me, the thing that stood out was um, there's, they kind of, they, the article almost seemed like they were trying to pit Western modern medicine against alternative therapy uh, when I don't think that it, it should be. And there was a comment saying that he believes that there are need for doctors and uh, pain, stuff like that. But there are a lot of times where, um, you know, people try to take a shortcut and um, basically nothing worth doing comes easy, I guess, or it comes uh, quickly. You have to work on things if you really want to properly heal. And uh, it's the thing that really drives me nuts is that people are, are considered to be crazy and conspiracy theorists and, uh, you know, blacklisted because they believe in this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, you can only see so many stories like this before you have to start to believe that there might be something there um, for this kind of stuff. So the article kind of alluded to the fact that, you know, if you, if you need some cut out, you need a doctor, if you break your ankle, there are, there's need for it. Right. But there's also different ways of doing things that don't come in a pill or, uh, or whatever you want to put into your body. So it was an amazing story. Me personally, um, we can get, I'll let you guys talk. Cause I've been talking for a while, but what do you think of it drums? I'll be, I like I said, I'll be, I'll be completely honest. I've only read maybe half of it so far. Oh, I thought it, it was, was really long. Yeah. And I just, whatever all the time hadn't got, um, but no, like, like you kind of went over it pretty good, but like, wasn't he doing like DMT and shit too? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was the craziest paragraph actually. Yeah. That's the drug. Yeah. About how he was breathing black smoke out of his mouth and like somebody else saw him doing that too. Yeah. Like he said that he, like he thought that that was actually like the muscular dystrophy, like Get, leaving his body, his body, which is like so cool to me. I don't know. Like, obviously it's drugs, but it's like, but well, especially if somebody else saw it, right? Like that's what was weird to me that his the guy sitting beside him saw it happen too. If was that guy on DMT too? He was on DMT, yeah, yeah, for sure. But right, still. but like still, for somebody to corroborate your uh, your experience, breathing the, fire, yeah, like if you're still fucked up, like somebody else saw it, like that's nuts. I'm not gonna lie, I really, really want to try it, but I'm fucking terrified. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Liz has got a friend that goes has gone down to Costa Rica and uh, has a, a friend that does like the tours where you go out and and then like you you all take it together. It just sounds crazy. But um, so, no, like to for, for like there's a lot a lot of that type of stuff isn't available in obviously North America. So everybody's got to seek out whether it's overseas, like in in Europe, Germany's got some crazy uh, like regenerative 
stuff with your blood where they'll they'll spin your blood and then pump it back into you and like you feel like you've got new like a new body oh, really? yeah and so like it's going to start happening more and more and i think it's going to start happening more and more with athletes in particular because yeah. they have the, the money and the means to do it for mm-hmm. a lot of people to just pack all their shit up and and take off to costa rica for who knows maybe the rest of your life it, it takes mm-hmm. a lot right like so that's where medicine does come in and and is needed right but there are alternatives for the most part for for kind of the majority of things so um no i gotta finish this because i didn't know like if everybody was liking it as much as i was because i i was kind of deep into it but i just didn't get time to read the rest of it so i gotta get back into it too but it sounds like this is going to be like a documentary slash movie at some point too it has to be yeah so the, the, be. yeah go ahead Rio. well it's just a couple cool things uh Rappaport, um noted that he actually has family in medicine that's pretty much where all his his family has come from right and and like he just himself uh, not more him right no yeah Rappaport. yeah so which makes it even cooler on him that he went out there to do this story and he still posted exact word for word right like you know oh, he could have he could have turned it around into he's out there drinking his own piss looking like an idiot but he actually made him look like yep i agree you know what i mean like it's kind of yeah. cool and it's nice to see it's refreshing to see something like that and also drums i don't want to wreck it for you but i mean like he has two events that he can play in that have three, to be I played think. in three and they have to be played in 2022 oh really so he is he's exemption. golfing like oh, he's okay. golfing right now so and he yeah. said he feels free on the on the course right now so if he actually came back it it's doesn't just... even matter how he does when he comes back he's coming back i will put yeah, let's make it. Let's put money on it. If we can find a bet, like he's coming back for sure. Does he just want like, to like, though? That's the thing. No, this is the rollout. He wouldn't do this if he wasn't coming back. I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah, maybe he's gonna try for sure. But even they asked him like, "What happens if you don't make it?" Because it'd be a hell. <clears throat> excuse me, it'd be a hell of a journey for him. I think if he doesn't, you know, do what he needs to do in those three events, because he'll have to go back through the corn ferry and yeah. start qualifying again and stuff like that. But. If that's so, the way he's going, but this guy just seems like he's cool living in Costa Rica, surfing every day. That's yeah. what I mean. Nothing wrong with but that. But they said that he's, he's missing one thing, and it's that competitive, like his addiction to competition. Sure. Which I don't know. There's some cool parts to it. Like he runs runs every day, but he doesn't have shoes. Like he just basically has grip socks, and he's just a know, beach. He's just a beach bum now, man. Oh, I love yeah. that. And he, uh, like, I guess to without really spoiling it too much but he obviously if he's ready to play on the pga like the stuff that he has been using obviously has healed him and it's weird like he, i think he's kind of on the very far scale of it i don't think i could ever get to that point where he won't even go for an mri because he's worried about what the radiation will do to his body to see if it's healed or not but pretty wild stuff like could you guys could you guys do that because this house has no windows in it it just has screens and it sounds like they sleep outside some nights like could you guys do that in the jungle on the top of a mountain for like three days i'm not probably doing three minutes <laughs> yeah i'm not doing that like from now on but uh, but you don't like i guess neither of us or none of us like jor you said you've never got a crazy diagnosis like you had the craziest of the three of us but like you don't know until you're a professional athlete with the world basically in your hands and you, you could basically do whatever you want. And all of a sudden you go to the doctor and they're like, that's no man, you got muscular dystrophy. Like you're toast. Yeah. Like there'll be some, some, there'll be like a mental block there that he, he may not say that he hates doctors, but he knows like a doctor opened his mouth and my world was Mm -hmm. flipped upside down. Like Mm -hmm. there's, there's a little bit of hesitant hesitancy there from him, obviously for sure. Yeah, definitely. But I don't know. It's a, at the end of the day, it's a super cool story. You hope things work out for the guy, and it's it's super interesting. It's just another outlook on uh, on life in that sense. You know what I mean? Like a I natural want, pathway. I, the, I kind of want more super, of this. Yes, I was super surprised that. Uh, I mean, does he work for anybody? Is he a golf channel guy? He's Rapport? golf channel, yeah. Yeah. I'm very surprised they let him write that article, to be honest. With no, you. Golf Digest, sorry, not Golf Channel. I think he does Golf everything. Digest. He's on everything. He's the man. He's the Shannon shit. Shannon Rappaport is the man. I don't think that I could live in Costa Rica in that circumstance. Because, I mean, I think 
outside of uh i could live in costa rica i yeah yeah i'm just bugs are like my worst nightmare not tarzan's that probably the, the reason i love manitoba so much is because all the bugs die every winter <laughs> I, I don't know man. i'm bugs, getting sick of winter yeah, no. yeah, I think I, I'm like, I don't know. I, go I don't want to say I could do that. I couldn't do as extreme as he did, but no, I feel like I could go off the radar for a while. I would love to go off the grid. Let's do it. Just go do grid. some podcasts in Costa Rica. No, Fuck. I can't do yeah. it. No, you could. Anyways. If you were just put it this way, if no, we'll talk about this on later date, but I'll put this question in mind. If you were born without family, like, Possible because let's let's face it, family is really the only thing that holds us and keeps us in Manitoba, right? Well, you don't think? Well, I I talked to my mom about me this for sure day. right now. I talked to my mom about this the other day, and I said, "Well, you just have to come with me. Like you don't have a choice. If I'm moving, you're coming." Right, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't yeah, know. I mean, prior prior to this whole stuff we've lived through in the last two years, like. There would there would be times of the winter when it was minus fifty, and you would say, "Why why do I live here?" But I mean, I would I wouldn't choose any anywhere else to grow up. It's just like, really? uh, nah, I love just the the prairies and everything that comes with it. At the same time, you had a good childhood. You had a good experience growing up. Like if you had a shitty one, you're probably thinking the other way. True, yeah. and that's why a lot of people leave. I think right after school yeah. or, or yeah. before, so anyways teach their own right teach their own so too deep of a question i would say probably the best uh if you're into that kind of stuff if you're into i swear every paragraph i read i was like more interested it just kind of kept getting because i thought it was getting closer to the end and then all of a sudden he's swishing urine in his mouth and that was kind of uh you know what he said the way there he said the swish in the urine like he was actually drinking his urine for two weeks I think it was, but the swishing was because he chewed in, in uh, college, right? Oh, he's and trying it, to fix oh, his gums. Repairing and his it, restored his, it restored his gums in two days. Well, I'll so let I you started, guys know. So I've been sniffing my, I've been sniffing my whiz and uh, <laughs> thinking about whether or not I could actually do it. <laughs> like, okay, okay, think about, think about this. Like, if, if there was. Are we going here? Like, yeah. Where are we going here? We, we could go, we could go here. But if pissing in your mouth was the alternative to taking a drug, would you not just piss in your mouth and get it over with? I would. As I opposed would sure. to possibly getting addicted to that drug? Yeah. If, the, if, if you, you knew it was going to work. If you knew the effectiveness would be the, the, right. same, yeah, on, you know what? the same on both. You know what? I wouldn't even need to know that there. I would try it because what does it hurt? What's the worst that could ever happen from that? You're yeah, literally just, drinking fluids. They were in your body two minutes ago. Yeah, just warm. Anyways, you you would have to off. like eat a bunch <laughs> of like good food and like water and stuff. It couldn't be yeah. like uh, not a spare guy. Not after a bachelor party <laughs> Sunday morning kind of whiz. <laughs> Let's get into the segments here. After, Enough after not drinking talk, water for three days, I shouldn't straight. have brought that up. I was listening to a radio show and they were talking about John Daly and he apparently made a claim where he didn't drink a glass of water for nine years. <laughs> oh my god that's not <laughs> like didn't pour himself a glass of water or drink a bottle but like he would drink it if it was in like vodka you'd have like a vodka water <laughs> that's sick that's gross that is gross come on okay let's get to the segments what do we got here boys what order do you want to go in i'll leave it off because i mine's uh really average tonight i i've Quit really got some that. good no but this one is average i've got some really good ones saved up for the next couple uh, I found this one super interesting, so I wanted to say it first. But basically what it is, is it's actually from Tiger. And it's um, five simple tips. Uh, they seem simple, but five things just to be wary of during the round that will help your score drastically overall. Um, the first one is no sixes on par fives. So a lot of the time, like a, a six on a par five hurts, man. Like... You know what I mean? Like you should at least be making pars on par fives. I think a lot of the time when you make a six, it's because you, you try to make a dumb shot to go for a birdie. Right. Yeah. Whereas if you just played the whole smart, you probably wouldn't make a six ever. So Keep that's the mind, first though. one. 
keep in mind this is tiger right this isn't like a right. weekend golfer like change that right. to a double or something right sorry yeah but this is like to shoot i don't know this i just found it super interesting number yeah, okay, two sorry, no go ahead no double bogeys was the second one that just kills what i just said right <laughs> but this is like this is more geared towards like uh okay. between scratch we, and like and, a good golfer yeah so no doubles and there are lots of times when and i'll get into these later on in my tips but if you have a chip out, say you go for this big heroic shot, whereas if you just knock it to the hundred yard marker, you'd avoid the double hundred uh, percent. So no six on par fives, no double bogeys, no three putts. And it's, I mean, lots of times when you three putt, it's just a mental mistake that you just go to make it and hammer way past or something when you could just leg it up there and two putt. It, it would save a lot of strokes if you had no three putts in a round. Because let's be yeah. honest, lots of guys do. Uh, this one is, yeah, no bogeys with nine iron or less. Because really, if you're a nine iron and you shouldn't be making a bogey, those are the worst ones. And I, I'm so guilty for those. But um, And this last one is no blown easy par saves. Which means if you're right beside the green and you have a straightforward chip and you just have a brain fart for two minutes instead of just bearing down on it just to get up and down, you yeah. try to chip it in, you blow it past or something, or you leave it short and then you walk up and just try to tap it in or something like that and you miss it. Like there's so much of that shit that happens in rounds that you don't mm -hmm. realize it until you actually sit here and think about, wow, I actually do do that a lot. And like those are five things that aren't drastic, but if you just kept them in mind, like if you had them written down somewhere to, to avoid those, like I think you'd be surprised at the results, honestly. Yeah, I think the only one that I think a lot of guys would probably struggle with is the no doubles. Yeah. Because a lot of the doubles that I see are straight off the tee. Yeah. And, I mean, once you're there, it's hard to – but so I guess one thing you could do is just make sure you put it in play. Well, even mm -hmm. nine yeah. iron, too. Yeah. Nine iron, though, I mean, it, Not as it would depend. But... It would depend on – you know, if, if it's a tucked pin or something, and if you if you know you're probably not going to get it to within 10 feet, just hit the green. But, yeah, but don't talk too much about that because lots of my tips in the future are tied into these, so I don't want to get too into this, but this is... Okay. Uh, Where was that yeah. from, Rigo? Where did Tiger put that out on? I just, I read it online. It just article. text them. But yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like... There are a couple that I like, like that no blown par saves hit home. Like there's yeah, just so many for sure. times you're around the greens with just a straightforward chip and you're like, it's not even a brain know. fart either though. It's just like a lack of focus. You're either talking on your way to the green or something to your buddies or uh, you try to hit a shot, you know, you're not capable. You don't really of, need to. Yeah. 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 It's just so much stupid shit that you do. You that, just hit an eight iron and, and hit a pot basically. Yeah. Like, lots of guys, and I'm so guilty of it. Like, well, you guys know, chipping around the greens, like, you always try to make it, but, like, you just hit a good tee shot. You hit yeah. a good second shot. You're just off the green. I'm and then you're like, oh, uh, but, look at this. I'm going to chip this in for birdie. And then you blow it five feet past, and you make a bogey from the middle of the fairway, and you're like, oh, Also, Christ. though, also, if you're trying to make it, the odds are, I mean, every time I actually put it, the effort and focus into trying to make it it's close right instead right. of just trying to get it somewhere around the hole i actually think that you should be trying to make it because the smaller your target Circle. yeah yeah depends, depends that's, just what's around the that's just me that's yeah that's on a straightforward chip but depends what's around the hole right lots yep. of times you can sure. catch slope and end up with a six foot slider and then you're you're hooped but yeah you're hooped. anyways so just to recap them just all five so you could listen to them no sixes on par fives, no double bogeys, no three putts, no bogeys with nine iron or less. We could even change that to a pitching wedge or less. And no blown easy par saves. Test it out. There you go. 2022, best summer ever. Drums, what's the culture corner got tonight? Uh, so we're kind of in the middle of uh, finishing or getting caught up on Ozark right now. So other than everybody watch that shit 10 times better than Yellowstone. Uh, but we took a break. We took a break the other night and watched this new Netflix documentary. It's called the Tinder swindler. So it's this, 
girl like catfish yeah this girl matches with this guy on tinder and uh the first meeting he takes her on a pj to i can't even remember the country but takes her to another country but with his ex and their child so it's like this kind of weird beginning but he is a very wealthy uh son of a diamond manufacturer in uh in india or somewhere i can't remember now but so like this chick's thinking she she hit uh the lottery with prince charming here and then they uh he spends a lot of time abroad because of his big dealings with uh with his diamond company but every time he she's with him like there he's got like he spends like hundreds of thousands of dollars on her, like just crazy club experiences, <laughs> dates, the cars that they're in, everything, private jets everywhere. Um, but all of a sudden she gets a call one night that uh, dude's in trouble. They just got uh, attacked by a bunch of his enemies, a bunch of people that are coming after him. Uh, can you, can you get me some money? So this chick, uh, this girl ends up getting this guy, like almost 200 grand. In a, over the course of like a month and oh. like wiring him money and everything like this, taking out credit. his own account. No, no, no. She like t- takes out loans and gets all these credit cards and, and stuff. And she's getting uh, this guy um, all this money. And then she kind of, he kind of goes dark on her. And so then she's like frantically trying to get a hold of him, trying to get a hold of him. So all of a sudden he meets up with her again and uh he's like okay well we've got to put you on the payroll i'm gonna get you on the payroll just send them all your your info uh your passport info all this stuff so she's sending this stuff to this website and then a week later she gets a a check for like almost a million dollars from this place and she's like oh okay everything's good so turns out check can't cash guy goes dark on her and she like goes to the cops everything obviously all the the american express everybody comes at her and uh american express sees the guy sees a picture of the guy and they're like oh he's done it again so the documentary kind of goes through four stories of this exact same story the guy's running the same Uh scheme on four different girls just living an unreal life but wow. sna- snaking like millions of dollars and apparently he's done it he did it for like 10 15 20 years or something like this and like they they estimated he uh stole i think it's upwards of like 90 million dollars or something like this and it's and true it it's a true story true story true story dude got arrested like uh the last check watch it just for the last check she's just a g about it at the end she just fucks him over so hard and he gets caught <laughs> Um, but he, he does end up in jail. He What's gets a, like, he gets like 10 months and then he's just out doing it again. It's unreal, but I uh, bet welcome to the world, but how often do you think that shit happens? Like, I guarantee you there's tons, tons, tons. and both ways. Like there's guys and girls doing the exact same scheme. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's why we have to pay so many fees. So that all these banks can cover this bullshit. Right. Like, holy shit. Insurance premiums are so high. Speaking of that, when am I getting my MPI rebate? <laughs> this isn't the time, man. <laughs> not, the pla- not the place. Should be any day. But yeah, every oh, time every time, a, every time, a new girl popped up on the screen, I'm like, really? <laughs> like, another one? And look, like, for word, the exact same scheme, the exact same text messages. Well, for, I mean, why change it? If yeah, it, he, he's why just, fix it if it's he's got a rotation broken. and it just worked perfectly for him. Is he a good looking guy at least or no? Uh, he's a decent looking guy, I guess. Yeah. Is the ex wife and kid in just on a it? fella? That was undetermined, but apparently not. What? Yeah. Oh. But he had like all these bodyguards and shit. Yeah, like it's just wild. But it's like so Tinder. elaborate too. Tinder Swindler. Yeah. On Netflix. You got it. You got it, baby. That's it. What's okay. in the uh, what are we doing now? 
junk drawer is no longer. So I, I thought of a name for it, actually, you guys. I might need your approval, though. So basically, the idea of it is kind of to like escape the old system and tips and stuff to do that and like different reasons on why you should maybe consider doing it. So escape, do you guys remember that song called escape? What's it called? Escape. <laughs> but then it's like the pina colada song or something. If you like pina colada. Yes. Come with me and escape. In oh, I don't have my Wi-Fi on anyways. I think it's called escape the pina colada song. So I want to call this segment two pina coladas. Okay. Okay. Just a thought. Don't have to confirm anything today, but that's a uh, possible boo -boo? name. So if anybody has any ideas out there, you kind of have an idea of what it's going to be, I think. Or we can have a few more and guys can get a good feel for it. But anyways, tonight I'm going to talk about Bitcoin. I have some notes here. So if I'm looking down, uh, that's why. So I've, I've talked over and over again, I think, and it, for a little while, especially when Theta was like on a run, I was talking about Theta. Still a huge fan of Theta. I think it's the best one out there, but it is different than Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a completely different beast than all the other cryptocurrencies uh, in itself. So I got five reasons why I own Bitcoin, kind of like Rigo's five tips. So before I get going, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for a conversation between friends. And uh, if you value your money, you should keep it safe in uh, one of the big banks for sure. So number one, has a fixed supply. So there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin mined. That's it. Once that's done, um, it stops being made. And then we kind of just keep going through the same ones over and over again and exchanging it back and forth. Um, so once once the last Bitcoin is mined, I think that the last Bitcoin actually takes 40 years to mine. Um, that could be a myth that I heard, but the as it started off with like a lot and then it keeps having and having and having. Um, so anyways, once it, once it if the final one is mined, it becomes a deflationary asset. So compare that to our current fiat system where they printed... Uh, I think it's 40% of the total US money supply they printed in the last two years. So 40% of the total US money supply in the last two years and 60% in the last, in the other 60 years. So that's just kind of gives you an idea of what's happened in these last two years and why we're seeing $1.60 gas prices right now because of inflation. So Bitcoin is deflationary. Once there's 21 million mined, it's it. Um, Number two, China banned it. So that's all I will say about that. That's, that's a good thing for freedom. Um, number three, the smartest people in the world are using it and working in the industry right now. So if you're paying attention to stuff, you see how many jobs are coming up. And it seems like all the most intelligent people and the best uh, minds in the world are all kind of fleeing to the world of blockchain. Um, and that's a good thing, obviously, if you got the best minds putting together projects, it's going to turn out pretty well. Um, so if you listen to guys like Michael Saylor, Raul Paul, uh, Jack Dorsey is huge into it. Uh, and Cliff High, I consider these guys to be the most intelligent people on earth and they're all heavy into this Bitcoin. Um, and if you, if you really want to be blown away after the story about Morgan Hoffman, listen, go watch the interview uh, with Michael Saylor. Um, it's about an hour long. It's called Bitcoin versus gold. So he actually does a debate, which we haven't, we never get to see anymore, but it's a debate, a debate, Bitcoin versus gold. So he absolutely shreds this guy. And if you watch that interview and don't immediately go buy some Bitcoin, I'd, I don't know what to tell you. Cause it's just like, it's crazy. Number four, it's decentralized. So unlike some of the other cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is totally decentralized. So there's no CEO of Bitcoin. There's no board of directors of Bitcoin. There's no one that you can call on the phone and talk to at Bitcoin and say, how do I do this? It's just like, it's totally decentralized. So the whole thing is basically a network of uh, 
of computers around the world that verify transactions. And if one of the computers happens to go down or gets taken out, there's hundreds of thousands or hundreds or thousands of computers that will compete for the next block essentially. So if you compare that to the central bank, which is the current, which is what we're currently in, I mean, you, the, the title of it gives it away. It's centralized. Um, it's controlled by the same people in the world and they control how much they print, how much they give out, who do they give it to. And uh, if they roll out the digital c- central bank currency, they can basically shut you off at any time. So if you've noticed the truckers lately, uh, they got shut down by GoFundMe and they actually started sending Bitcoin in because there's no central party that can stop Bitcoin. It's pretty cool. And uh, the final thing here is it's going to be the currency of the internet. You need a currency for the internet. I think we can all agree the fact that the internet's not going anywhere. Uh, as much as some people are a little bit worried about that, I don't think it's going anywhere. So basically, you're going to have a choice between Bitcoin or central bank digital currency, which I think that they're going to try to implement here in the near future. Um, but I'm a huge fan of coins, silver, gold, other coins. I think that they'll be part of the the new system, I guess you'd call it. Um, I think that they'll probably be more valuable in the end, but you still need a currency to transact online. You can't sell, you can't buy a golf club from Toronto or wherever and send them a silver coin. Like it just doesn't work. You need something that uh, you can actually send through the internet and Bitcoin is internet money. They call it a scam. They call it magic internet money, but it is just the exact same as our current monetary system, except it's not controlled by humans and there's a fixed supply of it. So uh, that's it. I think that uh, I just saw today that there's a new new documentary on YouTube about El Salvador and uh, how Bitcoin, they're basically making a Bitcoin city in El Salvador. So I haven't watched yet. I might watch it tonight, actually, but uh, something pretty cool. And they recently made Bitcoin their legal, legal tender in El Salvador. It's probably and, been uh, almost a year now, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it's been half a year to a year for sure. Um, they got in a lot of shit from the IMF who is control of everything. So they didn't like that, which is, in my opinion, like, again, like China bandit, whenever the IMF's giving you shit, you're doing something right for society and for freedom. Ruffling feathers. And, uh, they're close to, uh, releasing their first Bitcoin bond ever this month. So lots of cool stuff happening there. I don't know. I mean, you guys know that I've been overly obsessed with it for a long time now or for a couple of years. And it just like, i never ceases to amaze me. I never have stopped learning and I probably won't. There's just so many cool things to do with Bitcoin. And when I started looking into it all, I really believe that Bitcoin was a scam, but I mean, listen to those things and you can tell that it's the real deal. And it's, there's a reason why China and the IMF and stuff like that hate it because they don't have any control over it. So I don't get the mining portion, like at all. Like there's a fixed amount, so what are we mining? We have to. We're still trying to hit that amount. Well, there's a whole bunch of like supercomputers. Like when it first started, there was like uh, basically you could do it on this computer. Like it, there was nothing high tech. Is as a as a network grew, the computers have to keep up because there's so many more transactions, right? So basically all the computers around the world are fighting, they're competing to mine these blocks. So it's, it's really strange when you actually stop and think about it. They're, these computers are solving math problems and basically the first one to solve it verifies that block and they get rewarded for it in Bitcoin. So when, they're, when they say that they're mining Bitcoin, it's actually their payment for verifying those transactions. So people get thrown off by like the whole mining thing. They think that it's coming like out of the ground or something. Yeah. Like I, but, I thought it was, they were create creating a, a Bitcoin like out of They time. are because they get paid to verify the transactions. So a new Bitcoin right, I get goes that. into the system. But yeah. I thought like, I don't know. Do you just picture like a wallet with or your pocket full of coins, right? I'm thinking Holy these computers shit. are spitting out coins. Really? I know. I think that that's what. Uh, really? <laughs> I mean, that's That's... definitely what I thought of when I first uh, started looking into it, because that's what it sounds like, right? You're getting these, you're mining something physical, but I mean, you're mining, you're getting digital coins, Bitcoin. So you actually are mining, you're creating a new thing and 
your cats have been on fire tonight, Rigo. Hanks put on a show. He's been that walking was the first time that's happened in uh, what over a year that we've been doing this. That he's yeah. at one of them's actually jumped up here. That scared the shit out of me, man, honestly. <laughs> I was kind of just like in a daze trying to rack everything that you were saying up, and then all of a sudden there's a cat sitting on the table. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, there's there's actually one of our clients that's uh, mining Bitcoin, and I, I still don't really understand what the hell is happening, but well, trying to find a market for it, it's tough to do right now. I just uh, kind of explained it, but you were getting attacked by a No, cat. no, I, 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 like I, I've heard the explanation that you just gave a few times, but I still don't really get what they're trying to solve. Math, like with the numbers, I don't, I don't it's code. get it. It's all code. Like, so that's like- why it's... Each transaction that's completed sends out this code. All these miners are trying to solve that equation in order to facilitate that transaction, which they take a little cut of, essentially, oh, yeah. right? Basically, yeah. I mean, every time that there's a transaction, like from here, similar to a bank, they need to verify that both parties have what they say that they're giving to each other. Um, so then they'll verify it. And then once all these come together and form a block, all these transactions that have been going on between me and you, me and you, whatever, they get verified. But then once they all, there's a certain amount of them make up a block. Once that block is verified, it cannot be changed by anybody. Hmm. It's on the blockchain. And then there's another block and another block and another block. That's why it's called the blockchain, right? So... And it can't be changed. Once once there's a block that's formed of all these transactions that have been approved, you cannot change it. So it's cool. But a lot of people think that it's like dirty, like used for a crime and stuff. Today, they actually seized $3.6 million of Bitcoin from criminals. So, I mean, if you think about, compare that to- How much cash? A suit, how much, yes. How many suitcases of cash or how many helicopters full of cash? that they would have had a hell of a time tracking down if they ever could. Whereas this, they can, they can find it if they really need to. So, or that they facilitated or that they facilitated. I'm not going to speak on that, but that's two pina coladas tonight. There you go. Two pina coladas. Like Cause I mean, I think of the beach too, and that's what you want to get to. You want to make some good financial decisions and get to a beach. Do you like pina so, coladas? I love pina coladas. Getting lost in the rain? Like getting lost in the rain. Is it lost? Isn't it caught? Uh, yeah, caught maybe. We go got caught. Cost, lost, caught. All right. All well, right. it seems like we uh, tipped our scale again tonight. We went overboard on time, but. What's time? <laughs> okay, let's wrap this shit right. up. Let's get out of yeah. here. Let's peace. Love you boys later. later. Good luck. Hey, love you boys. Take care of yourselves.